a team that's been smoking cigars and celebrating otherwise after the past couple of Super Bowls mm. has an issue that took a turn toward the negative, even more negative on Wednesday. And that's the news that Rasheed Rice and we had been wondering, OK, what is going to happen? We had some facts that had to be resolved. Yeah. Last week. Was he driving one of the two cars racing on the highway in Dallas that caused a six car pileup and injured people? Would he admit that he was driving? Would we have to Sapruder film the dash cam video that we've shown multiple times? Well, we found out, courtesy of his lawyer, that he was driving. So now we wait to see what the charges were going to be. And Chris, the charges were filed on Wednesday. And here's that video that shows the speeding, shows the crash, shows the aftermath, shows Rasheed Rice climbing over the console and getting out of the right front passenger door, as you spotted when we looked at it last week. Eight total charges for Rasheed Rice. All of them are felonies. Eight charges, all felonies. Six counts of collision involving bodily injury, one count of collision involving serious bodily injury, one count of aggravated assault. I'll be curious to see how the prosecutors turn what happened into aggravated assault, but that's at least the charge they're making. And prosecutors tend to not make charges that they don't believe they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. And one big thing to note here, omission so far charges for leaving the scene of an injury accident while you were the driver of the car that's other, that's another felony if there's injuries if there's just property damage it's not but a that felony. hasn't been there's injuries that hasn't leave, been, that hasn't yeah that's not that's not on the docket yet and, and it doesn't it doesn't mean they're prohibited from doing it they can add those charges whenever they want it's it's not double jeopardy or anything like that jeopardy doesn't attach until the jury is sworn in they can add those charges. This is just the starter, I think. Eight felony charges. I, the, I'd be surprised the basics, right? if there aren't yeah. more because he clearly left the scene. Yeah, sure. It's undeniable that he left the scene. Right. Are you are you are you surprised that it's all felonies? Did you know that? Did you think this was going to happen? I knew there was leaving the scene was a felony in the state of Dow or in the state of Texas and Dallas, like we had talked about when it first happened. But you know, were you surprised to see all of these these counts be felonies like this? Well, no, because based upon the Texas statutes I found, the street racing All of it causing is. the injury, right. when you throw in the injury, that's when it becomes gotcha. a felony. Gotcha. And okay. the key is, the key is, if it's just regular bodily injury, it's a class C or third degree felony. I can't remember which specific terms they use in Texas, but it's a third level felony. It's the lowest level felony, one to five years. Serious bodily injury kicks it to the second class, two to 10 years. Oof. And the word serious bodily injury is important because if there was one person who suffered a serious injury, that takes the leaving the scene to a higher level oh, as well, yeah, right. from one to five right. to two to 10. So if there's a serious injury, and you know part of the fight is going to be what does serious injury mean? If you're representing Rasheed Rice, you want to try to argue that it was in bodily injury, but it wasn't serious. And it's a tough needle to thread because you don't want to come off as crass yeah. or uncaring. Right. But you're talking about one to five versus two to ten. That's one of the things you probe if you're a defense lawyer. How can I prove this wasn't a serious bodily injury? It gets back to what we were saying the other day, though. It's the same behavior. The outcome drives the punishment. Yeah, I know. You do the dumb, reckless, right. stupid, irresponsible thing. Right. And you're basically playing Russian roulette with someone else's life. Sure. And the worse the outcome, the worse your punishment. The behavior is still the thing that you're trying to deter, but that's the reality. There's one serious bodily injury in the assessment of the prosecutors, so he's looking at two to ten for that, one to five for the others. And I don't know how it would work, concurrent versus consecutive. And it may just be they're loading up the cannon with as much as they can and hope something will something stick sticks, yeah, and hope right. there'll be right. a significant punishment. But again, you know, people think, oh, well, the, the rich and famous get, you know, get a pass. A lot of times they it's the opposite. They want to they want they want to make Martha an example. You. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Because it'll be covered and it'll send the message loud and clear. That's one of the purposes of the criminal justice system to deter others from doing the same thing. So you don't have to chase a bunch of people around to get them to stop doing this. If you hammer somebody, street racing is a big problem in Texas. Yeah. 
They passed a law about it last year to try right. to get rid of it. Right. If you can make an example of Rasheed Rice, you maybe get some of these other people who are inclined to race on the streets to not do it and save lives in the process. And Rasheed Rice is the guy who's going to end up being the person who gets made the example of. Well, all right. So, Mike, I want to keep peppering you with questions here because you're definitely more of the expert. I mean, first off, it, I, I don't, you know, again, I didn't know what I was expecting. You know me. I'm just paying attention to football and all that. I don't think about this all the time. Right. But when I saw this come out yesterday, I did go like, damn, OK, wait, May, you know, I knew it was serious, but I guess it took me into another level of like, oh, gosh, like, like maybe where I thought, OK, this the, the, this, you know, the can might get kicked down the road. It might take a while to figure some of this out. And then, like you said the other day, he might get suspended in the 2025 season. Right. I don't know. Yesterday made me think a little bit differently, that it was a little bit more urgent, a little bit more you know, at play here and, and serious than maybe I thought the charges were going to be. And now I'm looking at it going like, damn, I'm, I am, you know, on a, on a football matter, right? I'm always worried about the innocent bystanders who got hurt. I'm not trying to be insensitive to that, but we're a football show. Like, I, I am a little bit like, damn, is Rasheed Rice going to get suspended for like significant amount of time this year? Like the Chiefs, they finally found a guy towards the end of the year. It was Rasheed Rice that they felt like, ooh, wait, we can build around him and that. And now here we are, and it's like, ooh, wait, what, the, the, this, the future's uncertain. So, I mean, am I crazy to think that right now? No. All right. Well, you're not. And I, I right. think, you know, a, a lot of times you need to have the official charges so it crystallizes and you're dealing with something real and you're not speculating on it could be this and here's what might happen, it could be that. And here's what might happen. Now we know what he's facing and we can do the flow chart of how it goes from here. And I've asked the league a couple of times about Rasheed Rice and their standard response is we're monitoring developments and they don't like to do anything definitive under the personal conduct policy by way of a suspension until the criminal process has resolved itself. The Chiefs had no comment by the way, on the Rasheed Rice news from yesterday, even though, as we'll talk about more in a minute, a uh, fairly important piece of chief's property was in the car that he left behind as it relates to the personal conduct policy. When you start putting felonies out there, because usually we think of, of paid leave under the personal conduct policy is something that happens if there is domestic violence involved, right? Because that's kind of what gave birth to this notion of paid leave where you have a guy who hasn't been convicted of anything innocent until proven guilty, all constitutional rights still on the table, but the NFL is going to say, you don't play, you're still going to get paid, yeah. and the NFL believes that's not punishment. And I still reject that completely and totally. They have to know that, not that they care. Not that I care that they don't care. I think it's wrong to put a guy on paid leave when he's yet to be convicted of a crime and say it's not punishment. It's clearly punishment because guys want to play football, and they want that routine. They want to be around their teammates. They want to go out and contribute. They're still getting paid, but they're not just doing it for the money. Right. They're doing it because they love it and they want to play football and they want to be part of a winning organization. Paid leave is now, I think, in play here. Now, the NFL won't do it until we get closer to the season because there's no reason to do it now and create another news item because it is a PR tool. It's not a legal tool. It's a PR tool that the NFL uses to manage these delicate situations. Right. I think what's going to happen, here's my prediction based upon what we now know. I don't think he'll be at off-season workouts. It'll be an agreement between the Chiefs and Rasheed Rice. Right, they won't be there. Away, right. Remember remember when Tyree Kill was under investigation? His yeah. son turns up with a broken arm, and it happens right around the draft, and that was when they drafted Nicole Hardman in round two, I believe. Yeah, it was. Because they're thinking, we don't know where Tyree Kill's going to be. He voluntarily stayed away from the balance of the off-season program until that was all resolved and it was resolved with no one being charged. I remember the prosecutor saying, I have a child here who's somebody injured and I can't prove who did it. And that's not justice to me. And that's still out there. People act like he got exonerated. No, just they weren't able to prove that anyone did it beyond a reasonable doubt. So they didn't try with Rasheed Rice. I could see the chiefs and Rice agreeing he'll be gone. And then as we get closer to the season, if these criminal charges aren't resolved and we know how, if you're paying attention to, you know, national news where there is one specific person who is facing four different criminal trials, it can move slowly. He could be put on paid leave all year long. And then the question becomes if the Chiefs put him on paid leave. You know, some of these teams, when a guy gets put on paid leave, they just cut him because they don't want to pay him to not play. He's only got a million dollar salary this year. 
and it's fully guaranteed. They could probably void the guarantee and cut him if they want to. And again, it's only a million bucks, but it's not Tyree Kill. It's a guy who came on late last year, and they may decide, we don't care, we don't want this guy on our team anymore. That's a possibility. So as we're thinking of the float chart, I think step one, he won't be at off-season workouts by agreement between him and the team. Step two, he'll be put on paid leave at some point. Step three, will the Chiefs just cut him, or will they pay him to not play possibly all year long while this legal process plays out. And I think paid leave is even more likely because I'm watching NBC Nightly News last night with Lester Holt, and it's on there. The developments in the Rasheed Rice case are making national news, not sports news. They're making national news when they happen. That makes it more likely, the NFL says, we got to get the heat out of the hot kitchen here and put this guy on paid leave. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, 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 you're, you're right. It's definitely become a, a bigger story you know, r- rather than just guys like you and me. All right, so, I mean, the, 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 the Chiefs, that, I was going to ask you something that I bounced off of that. I, I forgot where I was going to go with it. I totally lost my train of thought there when you went into the Lester Holt thing. And I forgot, and what the hell I was going to say. A, you didn't expect the Lester Holt drop I didn't, on a Friday I was like, morning Whoa, for you? Damn, wow. Thursday I, it, for everybody it did, else? It, well, it'll pop into my head either way. But, yeah, I, I, I would be concerned. I, I'm, I would be concerned with Rasheed Rice. Oh, here's what I wanted to ask you. Here it is. With the NFL, right, and the video being out there, Right, and, and it being everywhere. Can that, you think, expedite their process and maybe, you know, maybe suspending him or doing something here to going, hey, we don't really care about you know, the legal process or whatever. We have the evidence. It was illegal. We, we see you driving 110 on the shoulder and crashing into people, right? Can that just alone kind of, you know, give them strength in this this issue here instead of waiting for the law and the court and all that to, to figure it all out? That's a great point. Now, in the aftermath of the Ray Rice case, yeah. the NFL made this decision that we're not going to do anything right. until charges are resolved and yeah. we have paid leave. That's now the thing that we use as the National Football League to extricate from the football field, from the broadcasts, so... NBC, CBS, Fox, ESPN, Amazon, nobody has to say, oh, there's Rasheed Rice, by the way. He's, you know, you have to do the responsible thing and point out he's facing these charges. They don't want that pointed out to an audience of 20, 25, 30 million. I think back to pre Ray Rice. Yeah. When Mike Vick, now it's, you know, it, it's, it's a very different set of facts, but he got indicted. For violating federal law, he was facing felony charges of dog fighting, gambling relating to dog fighting, etc. He was just gone. He was indefinitely suspended by the NFL without pay. Gone. That could happen as well. I mean, look, the reality is the NFL can do whatever it wants to do. The NFL likes to have that flexibility to make decisions case by case. It doesn't want to have its hands tied by policy and precedent, and you're not allowed to do this, you have to do this. They want to do whatever they want to do. And they may decide the right thing to do here is indefinitely suspend Rasheed Rice without pay pending resolution of these charges. It would go against procedures post-2014, but it could happen. It could happen. And uh, it could be that this is regarded as heinous enough when you look at that video. And that video is shocking. We're starting to be a little desensitized to it in part because it's like we were trying to figure out who's driving. When you look at the front end of that video, it really is. It really, I mean, you see the cars coming out of nowhere and just, it's like the other cars aren't even there. It's like, it's like they're playing a video game. Yeah. No. People got injured. Yeah. In this crash. When, When Mark Donovan, the chief's president was talking about this a week and a half ago, he said, well, fortunately no one got injured. It's like, dude, can you not read? Of course the people got injured. What are you saying they didn't get injured? I know they're trying to win that election. They're probably concerned this is going to cause some people to vote no because that was all they cared about at the time. People got injured. It's not nobody got injured. People got injured. Thank God nobody got killed is what you should be saying. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.